The world of Exandria in Critical Role is a vast array of lore and world building filled with many different beings, cultures, histories, and secrets. None though I think more interesting than the home of Critical Role Campaign 3, Marquette. Hello everyone, welcome back to Fraud on the Telly. Join me today on this Critical Role Lore Explained video as we discuss the history of Marquette. Oh yeah, and just be aware, spoilers ahead. Marquette, the southernmost continent of Exandria, is most known for its vast deserts and mountains. Once in lush green landscape, Marquette was home to some of the most devastating fighting of the Calamity. As such, the land would forever remain scarred by the betrayers, the once heavily forested continent reduced to largely desert wasteland. Even still, the Marquesian people would continue to thrive, and over the centuries that would follow, civilizations would again rise in their new desert home post-calamity. The main stretch of desert that covers the continent is known as the Rumadon Desert, a vast expanse of heat, sandstorms, and dangerous creatures that wish to kill you. The Rumadon Desert covers one-third of Marquette. It is said that this desert was once a lush jungle, but during the fighting of the Calamity, Grumsh the Betrayer God, who attempted to destroy destroy the entire continent in one fell swoop was spoiled by the god's champion, Elixion. And while the continent itself would save, much of the land would be forever changed, these lush green jungles reduced to wastelands of desert. Yet even through all of these perils, bastions of society still exist here in the oasis city of paradise known as Ancarel. Known as the Jewel of Hope, Ancarel is viewed as the center of culture and history and power for the entire continent of Marquette. It was built hundreds of years ago, sometime post-calamity most likely, atop the ruins of the destroyed elven city of Kael Moro, which Grumsh had destroyed in the fighting of the Calamity when Elixian blocked his attack. Ankarel is ruled by its sovereign, Jaman Saord, a mystical man of power and mystery who it is believed has lived hundreds of years. It is said around 400 post-divergence, Jaman Saord came to Ankarel during a time of chaos and political strife. Under his leadership, he would bring the city together in a time of harmony, peace, and enlightenment. Unknown to a majority of the population, their leader, Jamanta Ord, is actually an ancient benevolent brass dragon who protects and defends this city and these people. While a peaceful society, Ankarel is a powerful city-state, boasting 65 feet walls, a standing army, and a powerful dragon. Few dare to challenge said city, though one did try centuries earlier. A great red dragon named Thordak had amassed an an army of cobalt and lizard folk and attempted to conquer the city of Ankarel. Though he would be foiled and his army destroyed, Thordak would ultimately be defeated by the dragon Devosa, aka Jamansa Ord. Ankarel is not the only place of civilization that exists in this grand desert. To the south, there is a village known as Chantel, home of Sean Gilmore of Gilmore's Glorious Goods. A small village consisting of somewhere around 200 fine wood building structures surrounded by palm-like fruit-bearing trees. Only a day and a half journeys from Ankarel, this journey would be easy for anyone if it wasn't for, well, the lack of roads in the dangerous desert, making this trip potentially perilous for many outsiders. To the south of the Ruidon Desert is the region of Ashanador, a region with heavy mountains and vast jungles. The gloom jungles of Ashanador are in the northeast of said region, surrounded by the Kale Mountains. A fertile jungle filled with rivers and a few scattered small villages most know to stick to the Chalk Step Road when venturing through this vast jungle. Hidden deep in its fold is the secret village of Baranak, home to the Gorgani tribe of lycanthropes. These lycanthropes wish to live peacefully and potentially learn to to control their affliction safely in the jungle. To the south of this jungle is the capital city of Eos, known as the City of Flowing Light. Eos is an orcish city and orcish society built on an island in the middle of Lake Koron. The city itself is three-tiered, built into a set of rings. The highest ring, the Dominion Ring, is the district of governance and learning, considered the most beautiful and wealthy of all of the districts of Eos. 
Below it is the Endeavor Ring, the mercantile district and the city's center. Finally, the Venture Ring, the lowest ring, which primarily consists of residential area and fishing docks and harbors. As I said earlier, Eos is an orcish society focused on education and learning, something that's a little bit different from your average view of an orc. Work, work. Nearly half of the population itself is orcish, and the city and the region is ruled by the court of the Lambit Path, a council that rules Ashanador. At some point around 823 post-divergence, a war broke out between the courts of the Lambit Path and a rival political state to their west, the Stratos throne that ruled over the Talent Highlands. The fighting between these two groups was brutal and would last for well over 20 years, parts of the city of Eos actually being destroyed in the battles. Eventually, though, these two nations would come to a truce in around 843 post-divergence, though relationships would continue to remain shaky, and vestiges of the fighting, like forts and watchtowers, can still be found in these regions. As we said, to the west of Ashanador is the Talent Highlands, a region currently being controlled by the Stratos Throne. A mountain society known for its military power and agricultural culture, little is known at the time of recording of much of the details surrounding the Talon Highlands. In the northeastern region of the Talon Highlands is the Highlands Bluff, a swarm of rolling hills covered in forest and dotted with rivers and waterfalls. This is the agricultural home of the entire continent of Marquette, the only really other known place of interest so far in the Talent Highlands at the time of recording is the small town of Gelvin, home to one Imogen Timult, Laura Bailey's character in Critical Role Campaign 3. As we move northward from the Talent Highlands, we enter the Hellcatch Valley, a winding region of canyons and absolute wasteland. The Hellcatch Valley was heavily impacted by the fighting during the Calamity. What was once part of the lush Odiran Wild now stands as a 300-foot cliffside marks the borders known as the rift between the Odiran Wild and the now Hellcatch Valley. The valley had its vegetation and fertility completely wiped out post-Calamity or during this attack by Trumpsh in the Calamity. It is now a desert, a badlands, encircled by the broken Agrod Mountains. This region is relatively controlled by the Basra Republic in the city of Basaras, though the area is too desolate to really enforce any kind of large political control. Groups of scavenger gangs known as Crawlers live out outside of the laws of Basaras and outside of the city, and largely fight with one another for control of this vast wasteland. As we said, the main bastion for civilization in the valley itself is the city of Basaras, a rough town described by uh, Ashton Graymore as kind of a shithole. Honestly, the best way that I can accurately describe the feel of the city of Basaras is to imagine the city of Tatooine and now combine it into the Mad Max universe and add a, a little bit of fantasy uh, mojo for good measure, and you basically got Basaras. We'll never find the more wretched hive of scum and villainy. Bordering the Hellcatch Valley is the Odiran Wilds to the northwest. Unlike its barren neighbor, the wilds consist of a vast jungle surrounded by mountains. Denizens of the wild make their way through the jungle on the honored trails, avoiding the dangers of the wildlife and sticking to the trail as much as possible. Many believe that these lands are heavily linked to the Feywild, and woe come to anyone who ventures off of the path. The capital of the Odiran Wilds is Drusar, marked by five rocky spires rising above the jungle. Many theorize that these spires were once a single mountain that was somehow destroyed during the Calamity. Each of these spires served as one of the hubs of the city of Drusar and are connected by a series of gondolas. First, the Airy Spire, the tallest of the spires and home to the city's universities. Next, the Core Spire, the largest of the spire and home to the Shandari Quorum, the governing council of Drusar. Along with the Lantern Spire, the Lucent Spire, and the Smolder Spire, these five spires make up the city of Drusar. Drusar is seen as one of the largest cultural mixing pots in all of Marquette, largely due to the fact that it still has a functioning skyport within the city, the city borrowing rights, traditions, and cultures from many different peoples across Exandria. And the Hartmore Hamlet, located in the Hartmore, the lowest elevation point in the Odiran Wilds, and thought to be built atop an ancient civilization. Finally, moving north, we come to the Agrod Mountains, which split the Rumidon Desert from the Bay of Gifts, a large bay on the north coast of Marquette. In this city is the port city of Shemail, a major trade center and hub and tourist attraction famous for its 
sandy white beaches and home to many resorts, such as one, Dallin's Closet, the home of Vex and Percy's wedding in Political Role Campaign 1. And that really does it for our brief history of the continent of Marquette. There's still like a ton we don't know about this region, and I'm sure as Campaign 3 progresses and as more Critical Role campaigns out, we're going to learn way more about this awesome calamity scarred region, one of my favorite areas in all of Exandria and Critical Role lore. As always, if you enjoyed the video or learned something new, please make sure you like, comment, and subscribe, as it really does help me out, guys. Once more information on Marquette is released, expect an update video to go along with this one. If you enjoyed the content, why don't you consider checking out the links in the description box down below. If you want to see more Critical Role lore content, then consider checking out our Critical Role lore playlist, or just click one of the videos on screen now. As always, guys, drink your water, tell your mother you love her, and I'll see you in the next one. Until next time, peace, love, auto.